Barnaby Jones, starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather, with guest stars Marjo Gortner, Meg Foster, Jason Evers. Tonight's episode, a gold record for murder. number one fan. Here you go, star. <laughs> You're too great. Mr. <laughs> Town, let me help you. Sit still for a minute. Come on. Yeah, I do that, and I'm out of a job. You're going to be out of an idol, too. <laughs> <sighs> hey, you up front tonight? Yeah, you look great. It was a beautiful show. <laughs> well, I just give the folks what they crave, man, you know. Those theatrics, those get them every time. <laughs> yeah, the performance was fine, but, uh... All right, all right. Hey, hey, come on. Move. <laughs> and so this is supposed to be a tryout time for new material, so... Yeah, well, only you didn't write any. Now, the new album's supposed to be delivered in two weeks. We've got to get into that studio. We will, buddy. We will. When? Yeah, you know, this gig's almost over now. We've run out of excuses. He's right, David. Everybody's waiting for your new material, honey. <laughs> well, listen to the voice of the public, huh? David, Glenda knows what she's talking about. You've got a position to maintain. Now, what keeps you on top? It's as much what you write as what you do. All right, already. I can see that my public has prevailed. Amen. You want new songs? You'll get them. But hey, the kid's got to be left alone, man. Just me and my creative juices. You dig where I'm coming right, from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, out, out. Come on. You too, Glenda. Go crash oh, someplace else. Come on. Come on. Move. Now look at your eyes. How many of these songs have you done? Oh, well, there's an album there, I guess. Now, look at all these. Man, you should have told me, Ray. You should have called me. Yeah, I've had other things on my mind. Oh, well, it doesn't matter, buddy, as long as we are in business. Listen, I'll take all these home and go over the rest of them there. I'll bring you back some money tomorrow. No. What do you mean, no, man? You always get paid for what you do. Now, listen, if you don't think what you've been getting is enough... Hey, uh... I don't want more money. I want credit. I want my name on my music. 
I mean, you're kidding, right? I'm, it's got to be a joke. No. It's time for me to be known for what I do. Hey, do you know what that'll do to me? Listen, so you give me credit for this one album, nobody's going to know about the past. Man, I give you credit for one album, and they're going to put your signature on everything that I've done. It's going to destroy me, man. Can't you understand that? Listen, now, I've made up my mind. That's it. I mean, that's it. Now, I'll get you some coffee, and we'll work out the details. ideas where we can go with this stuff. Will you please tell me what you think at least? David, say anything. Just say whatever comes into your head. <sighs> I don't feel so good. I think I'm going to sit down. <laughs> Listen, come on, just, I don't know what you want. You want me to say I'm sorry? Is that what you want? That's what I want, Ray. David Colton's music. Sorry, old buddy. Raymond couldn't have taken drugs, Mr. Jones. He wouldn't. Excuse me, Mrs. Walding, but didn't the police find that your son died of an accidental overdose of narcotics? They were mistaken. They didn't know Raymond. Mrs. Walding. Every mother feels that she knows her own boy. Mr. Jones, I'm a musician, too. A violinist good enough to be a concertmaster, but not good enough to have done all that Raymond did. It was my dream to see him become truly important in music. Well, the problem was that what Morgan thought was important and what Raymond did were different. I pushed him, made him turn to composition. But he was no longer interested in the traditional forms. And he liked popular music. We fought constantly. When I went to see Raymond about three weeks ago, it was for the first time in months. What did you go to see him about? Well, I had a possible commission for him. A chance for a concert. Wasn't he interested? He turned me down flat. He said he was too busy. But I said to him, a father doesn't want to remember. Don't you see, Mr. Jones? I drove Raymond to that overdose. Prove my husband is wrong. Please, Mr. Jones. Raymond had everything to live for. Eh? He had his music to look forward to and a lovely young lady. 
Why would he take to drugs? It's a question that ought to be answered, Mrs. Walling, but I can't promise that answer will be satisfying. You've been camped out here for three days? He's not answering the phone or the door. Do you think there's something wrong? David? 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 great trust I inspire. When you start living up to your responsibilities, David, people will trust you. Now, you can't shut yourself off like this. The record company people have been after me. Hey, the record company people are about to remember how come they love me so much. <laughs> Here. This is good. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Don't look so amazed. It came from a man's soul. Yeah, but three days. And you come through. <laughs> you are a genius. Hey, you got 40% of greatness, Gil. You know that? I go without sleep. You get rich. Who gets you the chance to display that greatness? Oh, you really sweat, grinding out all those deals over lunch with the wine. Oh, uh, David, you're exhausted. You need a little rest, a little relaxation, companionship. Hmm? Do you forgive me? Yeah, I told you I was going to work. Came here straight from the club. David, I came by here that night. See if you change your mind about being alone and you weren't here. I'm sorry, that night you weren't here. Lynn, no one has ever given you any rights to me. Now, whether I picked up some chick or just drove around in the car to clear up my head isn't something that you've got to know. Please, David, which one was it? Cleared up my head. <laughs> <laughs> Cleared up my head. Well, Paul, this is uh, very impressive. How long had you known Ray? 
Ray and I were just starting, Mr. Jones. He was rather shy with people. I was his first girl. And only then because I'd contacted him to ask if he'd speak the graduate music class I was in. Police reports said they found barbiturate and heroin in Ray's system, but no other needle marked. Ray never took drugs, Mr. Jones. He was too involved with his work and trying new things. Popular music. Yes. Well, I never saw any of it, but Ray was very excited about starting to write some rock. Well, now, they do have these stories about uh, rock musicians and drugs. Mr. Jones, Ray had his own little world right here. He didn't even know any rock musicians. What about this young man? David Colton. David Colton's about as big as you can get. I really don't see how he and Ray... According to the stamp here, this was a complimentary record. You have to know somebody to get those, don't you? Or be in the music business. Uh, Ray must have hundreds of complimentary records. Yeah, it's classical, but uh, it's rock. And... Uh... The only ones he seems to have gotten for free are all from David Colton. Quite a stack, too. Ray's address book? Yeah. David Colton. Address and phone number. Seems to me this is pretty confidential stuff, especially if Colton is as big as you see. Well, the numbers wouldn't be that easy to come by, no, but... But why wouldn't Ray mention knowing him? Especially when he was so interested in Colton's field. Well, one way to find out, pay a visit to David Colton. If you could help me find Mr. Colton. This is David Colton's house, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm Colton. But care to join us, friend? Discover the true you? Well, son, I think I've lived long enough to know who I am. Maybe you can help me discover the true David Colton. I always like to see a good act, though, buddy. <laughs> Mr. Colton, I'm Barnaby Jones. I wonder if I could talk to you. Go on, play, huh? Come on in. Thank you. Well, this glass must have been expensive. I know a place you can get some orange crates that fit right in here. Let's not be critical, Grandpa. And you don't look like a groupie, so what can I do for you? And don't tell me that it's my fault that your granddaughter ran away from home. Well, I'm afraid I'm investigating the death of one of your friends. Hey, look, Mr. Uh, Jones, is it? I'm finally getting to relax a little, man. The last thing in the world I want to hear about is death. Ray Walding. Walding? He died of an overdose. I was wondering how he got it. You, uh, you got a picture or something this Walding dude? You don't know him. I mean, his face is a little familiar. Maybe I've seen him around. He's a musician. A lot of people are. He had all of your records, complimentary copies. <laughs> My record company's got a big freebie list. I've got no idea who half the people on it are. Does your phone number get circulated the same way? If it does, it seems to me it defeats the whole idea of an unlisted number. That's how come I change it every couple months. Well, 
I'm sorry to have wasted your time, Mr. Colton. Uh, if you can't help, uh, I guess you can. Hey, look, Mr. Jones, uh, I'm sorry about this Walden guy. He's probably no worse than anybody still walking around. But, I mean, if you're trying to trace his connection, hey, uh, I can't help you, old buddy. You are supposed to keep people like Mr. Old Shucks there out, Gil, not just stand around and listen to them gas. It's too bad you couldn't help him. Yeah. Did everything go all right in there? If you can call the treatment a revenue, it would get around to still all right. Oh, please, um, don't think too badly, David. He's just trying to be the way that people expect him to be. Maybe you can help me. Have you ever seen this young man around here? No, 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 around here. Anywhere else? Um, yeah, yeah, um, a couple months ago, David, um, took me out to dinner, a place in Hollywood, and he came over to our table and started talking to David. Did you hear what they were talking about? Um, no, David just sort of hustled him away. It, uh, he mentioned his name. But David knew him. I mean, he said he was going to see that cat soon, and David wouldn't say anything like that unless he meant it. Well, thank you, Miss... Uh... Glenda. Glenda. Now, this is everything, Barnaby. Contents of the dead man's pockets, a vial of pills, and this kit. The barbiturates he took definitely match those in that vial. According to our tests. The police say that they found no readable prints on those? This junk passes through a million different hands. There's nothing unusual here, Barnaby. Standard for a dead junkie. Even this? I'd say that one of the hands that passed through was highly skilled, uh, wouldn't you say, Dr. Mayhill? Nice work. Mind if I check this out for a few days? We were just about to turn this back to the family. You can check with them if you'd like. I'll do that. Be nice to know where something this handsome comes from, don't you think? David is his own producer, Al. You know that. Well, as soon as you've got studio space, we'll start recording. Fine. Esther, call David and tell him to get everything together for tomorrow night. As a matter of fact, David already knows. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Turner. He was listening in on my phone. Uh, I'm sorry. At least you could pretend to really be sorry. What brings you here, David? Oh, just slumming. Hey, you know, tomorrow's cutting it pretty short, Gil. Yeah, well, they're dying to hear the new stuff. How long does it take to cut the album, anyway? Week? More. Hey, uh, aren't you going to ask me what I'm doing here, Gil? <laughs> All right, David, what are you doing here? Well, I went to see my lawyer, and uh, we had a real long talk. Yeah, what about? Oh, he is uh, explaining to me about personal management contracts and how they can really tie you up, you know? But, like anything else, they expire. Ours doesn't expire for several months. Yeah, that may be true, but uh, when it does, uh, I'm not going to renew. When that contract's up, we're through, old buddy. Like Ray Walding was through? Not our, uh, not our dead little mystery friend again. He's no mystery, David. Not to either of us. Yesterday wasn't the first time I heard the name Mr. Jones was asking you about. Ray Walden came to see me a couple weeks ago. He said he was a songwriter, wanted to know if I'd consider taking him on. He played one of his numbers for me. These are the songs you were writing the night Ray Walden OD'd. The night you lied about coming straight home. But this song... Wind up. 
Ray Walding performed it right on that piano, right over there, two weeks ago. He stole my music. Oh, come off it. <laughs> it's so much like you, David, to slaughter the golden goose. What do you want from me, Gil? Huh? What do you want? Oh, well, we're going to sign new contracts, genius. Long-term ones, tonight. And then we squeeze whatever we can out of what's left of your magic until your fans decide you're through. Nope, I don't know your friend. But you do sell these purses. Oh, yes, sell them out is what we do. As many as we can get, we're the only outlet. You see, what makes them so special is that they're all done on order. They're personalized. How do you mean? Well, when you look at it like this, it just looks like a design. But when you open it up this way, then you can see the initials. Mm. D.F. Now, who would D.F. be? Mm. Oh, here we go. Someone by the name of Don Farrell. Is there anything on that card that would indicate his address? Oh, yes. And you can have it as soon as you pay for what you've already bought. It's only $25. Just what I always wanted. You'll have to sign the new contracts and triplicate. Well, where's Glenda tonight? I thought she could be here to celebrate with us. Well, I didn't think she should be here. Oh. Well, maybe we can find someone else to ghostwrite for you. And then every phony little thing will be just like it was. Hey, I got a better idea, old buddy. How be we just begin the whole thing? All of it. <laughs> no way. <laughs> John is all mine. Some milk. Yeah. Here you go. That would be seventy five cents. Isn't that a little steep? Get what you paid for. That stage kind of different. How else can sesame seed milk taste? Sesame seed milk? Yeah, boss mixes it himself. It comes from 100% pure seeds. What about this, Mr. Farrell? Where'd this come from? Hold it. Now, I did a lot of talking to your landlady just to get her to tell me where I could find you. Doesn't seem fair to lose you now. Look, I got nothing to say to you, mister, or any other narc. I'm not a narc, but I can tell you that heroin is not a health food. Now, what I want to know is, when's the last time you saw this pouch? We both know what was in it. Who'd you sell it to? Well, I never sold anything to anybody. How did Ray Walling get it? Who? Look, 
Mister, I don't know what you're pulling, but I never heard of any Ray Walding. Look, there must have been 20 people around me. They saw what I did. I just passed the stuff on as a gift, as a token of appreciation. A token for whom? When I was young, they packed me off to school. They taught me how not to play the game. didn't mind if they groom me for success if they said and I was just a fool Say, that is a catchy tune. That's a real way you got the praise, too, old buddy. Yeah, could I talk to you? But Mr. Jones, this hasn't been a free show. I mean, we are trying to get ready for a recording session tonight. Well, this won't take very long. Well, let's go get some air. Come on. Come on, man. It's kind of personal. So is she. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Jones? You come to tell me how Grandpa's doing among the dopers, huh? Young fellow named Don Farrell gave this to you the night of Ray Walding's death. The heroin in it was used to kill him. Ray Walding? It's a young man whose picture you identified. Glenn, uh, looks like you've been working your mouth overtime again. David, I'm... Yeah, this, this could be the one I got that night. Happens to me every time I play a gig. People lay all sorts of garbage on them, you know, to try to prove their love. But hey, when I saw what was in it, man, I chucked it away. Scruples. Glenn, lay the deep, dark secret on him. David doesn't use drugs. He doesn't even drink any alcohol. See, I like to have myself under control when I'm going to move an audience. I've got to know exactly what I'm doing. Is that perhaps what you're trying to do right now? Look, Mr. Jones, you can ask my manager. He met me here after the show. Saw me throw the thing right down that hill. And Glenda, were you there that night? Of course I was. I was right here. That still doesn't explain Ray Walding. Hey, I never knew his name, Jones, till you told me. What did you know? The guy was weird. I mean, sort of a freak. It all started in that restaurant. And you know, that dude came on like he's just some sort of boozing buddy. I had to play along. And after that? Well, I'd see him. On the street. In a car once, following me. Why didn't you do something about it? Look, there are a lot of freaks around. 
who sort of make a hobby out of someone like me. Isn't that right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just sort of got to live with them. Now, I figured there is no point in telling you about it before. Now, and as for this bag, he could have been hanging around the house and just picked himself up souvenir. Well, you've given me a lot to think about. Well, just so you do your thinking someplace else, Mr. Jones, let me get back to work. If I can, Mr. Colton. If I can. Good afternoon. Can I help you? I'm looking for Mr. Turner. Oh, you and about half the population. No, Gil's not in. No, I don't know when to expect him. Yes, I'll give him your name. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Well, that's what happens when you've been saying the same thing all day and then listening to people get furious each time. You help me find him, and I'll give you a great big smile. I'm Barnaby Jones, private investigator. Hey, I'm sorry, but Gil hasn't called in all day. He isn't even answering his phone. You know, I bet that he cornered some promoter first thing this morning and hasn't let him out of the trap yet. You want a bite? No, no thanks. Is there some place he's supposed to be right now? Uh, not according to my appointment book. Does he have an appointment book of his own? You really do want to see Gil, don't you? It's important. Well, I'm not supposed to do this. Sometimes Gil does change his schedule and forgets to tell me. Oh, sorry, strikeout time. The only appointments for today are ones he's already missed. What about disappointment with Ray Walding? Did he keep that one? Oh, I don't. Oh, yes, he was very excited about what he heard. You know, that's such a shame for that man to die that way, just before Gil was going to make him rich. Ten forty-five. Ray Walding, songwriter. Ray met with David Colton's manager. He never told me. Maybe he just wanted to see that things were going right before he told you. But they didn't go right, did they? This isn't how things are supposed to end. Not, not for someone as brilliant as Ray. Well, Paula. Nobody knows how things are supposed to end up. Pile of boxes. That's all that's left of a life. Ray's parents couldn't handle doing this, and now I'm not so sure I can. I'm betting you do just fine. But I'll never be able to bring to others half the pleasure Ray could have. That's gone. Not all gone. What do you mean? What about the music Turner heard? The rock that Ray was working on? Ought to be around the house or somewhere. It could be sold, played. Well, the only thing the Waldings packed were clothes, and I haven't run across any music at all. Well, it's got to be around here somewhere. I don't understand that. Made impressions that Ray probably made when he was writing on the top page. How can you make anything out of that? Well, Paul, it's kind of like the preacher said about people. There's something good in everyone, but some, you just have to work a little harder to bring it out.
Eddie? I don't think that boy was playing around with drugs. Things were going too well for him. Well, he didn't really have any reason to follow David Colton around either, Barnaby. I don't think he did. He didn't tell his girlfriend one word about Colton, and I don't see him hanging around outside of Colton's house to pick up a bag of drugs and run off with it like a dog with a bone. Well, what was the link between the two of them, then? Music. That's all it could be. When was it you said that Colton started getting successful? Just the last couple of years. According to some of the people I talked to, uh, he was a member of a group before then. Too bad we can't talk to some of his old partners. Hear what they had to say about their pal. I beat you to it, Barnaby. I talked to um, one of the group who lives in New York now. He said that uh, back then, Colton could barely read music, let alone write it. Betty, you make a man proud. Well, now, look here. The missing music? Part of it? Betty, you remember where you hid my guitar? I don't believe you. You got the whole damn thing all wrong. It's not the kind you have to wind up on Sunday. Great, David, great. The Colton touch has never been better. Hey, why don't we make this the last take of the day, huh? Dave, the sound level will off in here. What do you say we take it from the guitar break and then we'll quit, okay? Okay, boy, let's give the man what he wants. Soon. Well, how did he get a hold of it? From Turner? No. Turner didn't have it. His secretary said that Ray wouldn't leave anything. You know, Barnaby, Ray's earnings from those few classical recordings he made had to be pretty small. He would have had to supplement his earnings to pay the rent. Maybe he did. Famous singer-songwriter who can't write and classical composer who can but doesn't want his father to know about it. Where are you going? Well, I thought I was doing a pretty fair solo here. Maybe it's time to see about a duet. Upstairs, teaching those record company executives the business. I thought I'd better stop down here and uh, pick up all my music before I went home. A lot of thieves in the business these days, you know. 
So I have learned. Did Ray write everything you're supposed to have written, or just this? Man, I starved, Jones. I starved for a year. No one would touch me. You can't just be a singer anymore, not with these kids. You got to be a creator, a damn poet. And you don't have a spark of poetry in your soul, do you? Man, Ray came up to me after a gig. It wasn't bad, but man, it wasn't good either. He gave me one of his songs. He said he didn't want his name on it. No, no personal kind of deal, and so I took it. The song was a hit. So you took more? And I paid him for everything he wrote. What did you pay for his life? You didn't go home and throw that dope away. You went right over to Ray Wallings for this. And what did you find out? That he'd grown up. He was through worrying about whether or not it hurt his family. He wanted credit for what was his. It'd be like killing me, Jones. Don't you see that? It'd just be a question of time before everyone would see that he was the real genius and that all the bows I would take him were just a bunch of lies. Man, I am David Colton, the main man. Nobody can take that away from me. Not Ray, not Turner, not even you, old buddy. Is that the reason Turner is so hard to find? Did you give him an overdose to? Come on. Come on, let's go. It's no use, Jones. Neither one of us can see. I got a gun. Go so I. Lieutenant Biddle, please. I think uh, we just sort of slide it in here on the bottom. I'll, uh, uh, maybe it would go better on the top there. Someone can move that. All right. Mr. Jones, we wish to thank you. It's all right. I needed the exercise. That's not all we're thanking you for, Mr. Jones. I spoke to the police earlier. They told me that David Colton has recovered enough to admit that he killed both his manager and our son. Ms. Walling said she knew her son. Neither of us should have doubted her. No, there's a lot of things I shouldn't have doubted. Uh, I've been reading his music, listening. Have you had a chance to analyze it, Mr. Jones? He used the classical approach to the rock idiom. Incorporated some of the greats and added something of his own. By the Stravinsky influence is unmistakable. And the Schoenberg. You know, I think I heard little Hank Williams in there, too.